Welcome my dear viewers, I'm the Human Floyd, and today I am both excited and nervous to announce a project that I've been working on for a couple of months. There's another festival coming up, kind of like the Witches Festival, and then we will continue on with our community features. So, I've got good news and bad news. The bad news is that my release schedule, which is about one episode every two weeks, might change for the worse coming in the near future. With both being involved in my roleplay guild and releasing scrollplay every two weeks, I've actually had to cut two days out of my real life job to make it happen. So it's something that I never thought that I could sustain forever, but I was just so passionate about scrollplay that I knew I had to do it. So yeah, I might be releasing less often in the near future. The good news is there's a solution that would allow me to keep the same work schedule and also continue to release scrollplay as I have been. There's a website, it's called patreon.com, and it allows viewers and artists to sort of create a symbiotic relationship. Basically, the way that we'll be using it is you can pledge to donate a certain amount per episode that I release. So if you offer $1 per episode of Scrollplay, then for example, you'll get added to my private channel, which has over 20 hours of roleplay footage on it, something like that. Um, it has my vlog that I'm starting, and a few other things as well. You'll also get your name added to the scrollplay credits, and the more that you donate, the better the prizes are. I'm open to the possibilities, and if I start getting some money off of this, I could actually afford to get some better equipment. So there are milestone goals, uh, for example, if I'm making $25 per episode, I will release the first episode of a new series. And don't worry, you'll never get charged for more than two episodes per month. As additional incentive, if you sign up to be a patron before the 28th of November, then you will be entered in a raffle to win this bad boy, a 30-day time card for ESO. So enter in by the 28th for a chance to win that. I've kind of held off on talking about this for a long time. I thought I was going to put this in another video like months ago. But, um, because I'm a pretty independent person and it feels like I'm asking for help. So I tried to make the rewards really worth your while so that it's more of an exchange than that. Um, I really think that these videos actually do benefit the roleplay community, otherwise I wouldn't do them. And if I could get some equipment like some video cameras and a computer that's not a laptop <laughs> so that I could uh, have less problems when I'm making videos, I feel like I could do a lot more with this channel. My dream, it really is a dream for me, is to just get more and more people into role playing and for it to just become a common everyday thing among people someday. Um, I mean, the more people that we get in our community, the more opportunities we have. And I feel like I could use my channel to do that even better than I am now if I had uh, the time and equipment that I need to do that. If you can't donate, don't sweat it. I am really devoted to scroll play, and I intend on continuing to make it, even if it's not going to be releasing quite as regularly in the future. So in my private channel, there is a two-hour video of the Witches Festival, which inspired another event coming up uh, that I'd like to talk about. So let's move on with the show. I haven't shown these to you guys yet, but here's some costumes from the costume contest at the Witches Festival. We have Amalexia, Shea Gorath, Ramus, <laughs> Link even, and one of my favorites which I didn't manage to get a good screenshot of was Dagoth Ur here. That one's really impressive. Uh, the Banescale Fellowship, in cahoots with the Vigilant once again, are going to be doing another festival from lore, uh, the Warriors Festival. This one is going to have in-character dueling using Lauren's DMRP system. Uh, here's a link to that if you don't know about that system. And you'll also be able to do emote fights. In lore it says that many youngsters get their first sword on the Warriors Festival and lots of skirmishes break out throughout the city. So that would be cool to see some wannabe adventurers getting their first sword and uh, getting into some brawls. Um, although we do suggest with emote fights that you send the person that you're fighting a tell and talk about the fight uh, beforehand. Either plan who's gonna win or just share your character's strengths and weaknesses uh, and keep true to those. 
This is a great way to prevent a fun roleplay fight from turning into an out of character argument. Arms vendors will be selling their wares. Uh, we have, I think, two guilds right now that are going to be arms vendors, uh, but we need more of them. So whisper the names on the bottom of the screen and get a hold of these guys and let them know if you as an individual or a guild want to be vendors because we want to see lots of them. I think it'd be cool. There's going to be a lot of other things going on as well, including the announcement of who the Nord Vice Cannon is. The race is over and a decision has been made. So this festival is on the 21st, which is a Friday. It's at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time in the town of Malton in the Rift. So hopefully we will see you guys there. Awesome, it's time to hear from the community. There's going to be one more community feature after this, and then we will move on to specific roleplay topics. Our first guest today is Mavic, or Mav, from ESO, RP, and The Mav Show. Alright, welcome to the show, Mavic. Hi, thanks for having me on the show! Absolutely. So, before I even get into your roleplay, uh, you have a YouTube show of your own now, don't you? It is brand spanking new, and I wouldn't exactly call it <laughs> a YouTube show, but it's it's something. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've enjoyed it so far. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's called The Mav Show. I'm That's so creative. Awesome. <laughs> For sure. So, And you played Hearthstone on one episode, and you talked about uh, patch notes for ESO on another one. Do you have any like big plans for it? Yeah, I... I I don't really have big plans. I just kind of like get inspired by what I'm doing. And then I'm like, oh, I should post about that. Like maybe I should play WoW while I'm, you know, talking about it. Or like my the last episode, I was playing Elder Scrolls a little bit towards the end. Um, and I was talking about it. So I don't really want to post too much about like the actual game, like patch notes. But that's kind of been what's going on lately. So that's kind of what I've been posting. Nice. Cool. I like spontaneity. That's good. Yeah. Uh -oh. Nothing, like, random. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> so, um, I know you've been involved a little bit with uh, the um, Redwater Buccaneers Guild. Uh, yeah. And we're going to talk to Moriel a little bit later in the show more about that, but uh, just briefly tell me a little bit about your character in that guild. Okay, so I also have a post on Tesso RP on the DC side character stuff, um, but her name is Bridget, and I even made a Tumblr for her. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, so just inspiration for, like, pictures and, like, stories and stuff, because basically she's just this intoxicated kind of ex-noble person who lost her family and all this kind of stuff. And so she decided, what the hell, I'm just going to go ahead and join a pirate crew and take on a curse. <laughs> <laughs> and take blindly. on a curse, you know, whatever. Yes. Absolutely blindly. Like, I, she gave, I mean, I don't want to give too many spoilers, but she gave parts of herself to this curse. And we'll see what happens. I'm really excited. Nice, nice. So you're also playing on Ebonheart Pact a little bit, right? I am. I'm playing a house dress Dunmer priestess. Ooh, hiss. <laughs> That's a mouthful. Yeah, if, I mean, if you guys want to ever help on the farm, <laughs> come on over. <laughs> hey. <laughs> That's <laughs> insulting. <laughs> I don't know. It's really, it's really kind of fun to play a traditional character when there's so many people that are like pro-liberation and all this stuff. I think it's good to play a Dunmer who's pro-slavery because in lore, like, 99.9% .9 of Dunmer are pro-slavery, so yeah. that's very cool. And the tension between that, like, having to make face, but then, like, whispering, like, you know, I, I could buy you. <laughs> like, <laughs> we could be successful. <laughs> so you're in um, House uh, Sarthos then, right? I am, yep. They are primarily dressed. They uh, are... I believe they're stationed in Craigenmore. I don't know if I'm saying it right. Yeah, totally. Craigenmore, yeah. Yeah, that's a big slit, like house dress area. You'll see like empty slaver homes and stuff, stuff like that. So it's kind of fun to dive into that. Haven't RP'd too much with them, though. Uh, just a few times since I haven't had much time lately. But I'm going to get better about that, so I'll have more to share. <laughs> 
Nice. So what's your character like? She, okay, so she was forced to kind of become sort of like the interrogator slash keep the slaves in line priestess. So she's not the, you know, like the, oh, you know, we'll just pray about it or, you know, that kind of thing. She's more of like, I will stab you if you don't do what I tell you. I can do that. <laughs> I'm noticing a trend in your character. They're there like are stabbing. trends. Well, that's why Bridget is so like, what? Because she's just such a floozy. But, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's been fun to play. So, I don't be a floozy. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, you were at the uh, House Inderal event the other day. How did that go? That went really well. There are so, I couldn't believe there were so many Dunmer RPers, like, and they were legit. They were, you know, being so, what is the word? I can't even think about it. They're just ridiculous. Like, they're so proper, and then you got the house dress crew out the backside that are, like, making deals, selling people, and and then you have all the priestesses and everyone, like, making face, and there's, like, this dance show, and all kinds of stuff, which was really exciting. I didn't <laughs> really been able to see any of that before. Yeah, I my buddy Huntorian uh, went to the event and they kicked him out because he wasn't dressed appropriately. <laughs> uh, you know what? I was actually way, way underdressed. I was still wearing a robe, but I mean, I don't think they were going to say anything to me. But they were like, oh my gosh, they were gorgeous. Was, can you say that about a game? <laughs> like they were all dressed up and all the ordinators were all geared up and it was just really cool. Yeah, that's awesome. I really think the uh, it's pretty cool how the Dunmer community has done a pretty good job of emulating Dunmer in lore. I think uh, Michael Kirkbride would be impressed. <laughs> oh, I, absolutely. And I think it's a good kind of benchmark or starting point for that side because I myself have a Nord. I know I'm an ultaholic, everybody, but I have a Nord, and I'm waiting to see, because I wanted RP here the other night, but I'm just kind of waiting to see the new, what is it, Skyrim group that's going on? Yeah, the Skyrim community. There's a, there's a lot of guilds involved in that, and they're kind of just getting their start and figuring things out, but I think it's going to be really awesome. Yeah, especially with the zones. I mean, they're gorgeous. Like, Riften is gorgeous, and then there's another one. I can't remember the name, but... They're just really pretty. The snow everywhere. It's just cool. Yeah, definitely. And there's a lot of great guilds involved in that. Um, the Vigilant is a personal favorite of mine. We're allies with them in character, and they're just oh, so nice. cool. <laughs> Can you imagine a bunch of Argonians and Nords? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Our, we, we hey, Scaly. Trip. <laughs> yeah, we did a little trip to Skyrim, and it was funny to see the sharp contrast of some Nords who were really like, hey, have some mead, and other Nords that were like, what are these wizards <laughs> doing here? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it was really cool, though, because I loved the interaction with the Nords who were a little more traditional in a sense that they were like, what are you guys doing here, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but so I'm curious about uh, Emerald Empire. You guys are kind of on hiatus now. That's your Bosmer guild. Yeah, yeah. I kind of took a little break. I believe everyone kind of stopped logging in one day, literally like one day before a huge event. So I just kind of, I ha basically had Mavic kind of go crazy and go off and go on like a rampart, just killing spree. And basically she kind of went a little more feral. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Uh, that guild is still kind of in the works or kind of building, but I mean, it's been around since what? Can I say pre-launch? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> like four access. days, four days before launch, it was created, and it's been it's still kind of going on. I still have a lot of people in it, uh, so we'll see what happens. I'm excited. Yeah, it's like you said, sometimes uh, I read your, your uh, entry for the character question on the last scroll play, and uh, it's it's like you said, you know, sometimes yeah. a character needs to fade into the shadows a little bit and then come out and be refreshed. So I feel like when the time is right, Emerald Empire will pop up again and be awesome. <laughs> oh, absolutely. And I think, I mean, there's the Heritance Guild, and I love it, but there's there's a void in the forest, <laughs> and I can't wait to fill that. But until then, I mean, I've been really, ex I'm really excited to kind of 
you know, reaching around. The game is still so freaking new. Like, my last guilds that I've created that have been super successful for years, I didn't even start till like, three years into the game. So, yeah, so I don't know. I don't want to get, I don't want to let the, the dream go, but, you know, gonna let it ferment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, get disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> get all rotted and good. Get all gushy. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, I don't know, personally, I think ESO is going to be around for a long time. I'm, I'm, maybe I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. There's not even housing yet or anything, so yeah. it better be around <laughs> for a long time. <laughs> yeah, I think it, I think it will be. I think, uh, the roleplay community is super strong. They they haven't even talked about another expansion or anything yet. Right. Which is really, which is exciting because usually it's like, oh, well, we're working on something and we're going to get it, give it to you after you pay us like $50 and... They haven't been doing that. Like the new patch stuff that's coming out is awesome, but I can't wait for the following on. <laughs> yeah, totally. Well, uh, do you have any last things to talk about with uh, any of your characters? Any cool role play that stands out that you'd like to mention? The only cool role play that's happened was the last one where we took the ship and basically poisoned and, you know, did all kinds of crazy stuff. But other than that, nothing really new yet. TBE or TBC to be continued. <laughs> always, always good for role play to hear that. Yeah, <laughs> so. Absolutely. Cool. All right. Well, thanks for coming on the show, and um, yeah, I will much for inviting me. Yeah, anytime, and we'll definitely be chatting in the future. Awesome. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Crow. Hello. Yep, yeah, that's me, Crow. So, um, what, uh, you were just telling me that the character that you used to play, uh, got killed off recently, uh, so what's with that? Oh yes, he did. Oh, poor, poor Jurima, valiant demon slayer, met his end at a bigger fish. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, he, he was, he was my, my main character for a few months, just about since I started playing the Elder Scrolls Online, so, um, but his uh, his story came to an end. All his secrets were revealed. He he's his character is that he's a, or was that he was a demon slayer, really noble and stoic and and um, sort of a doer of good. Uh, but under the under the facade, he was a dark mage doing dark things and such. And uh, and all those secrets were out. So his story was sort of told. And I thought this murder charade. It's kind of a good time to get him killed, so that's what I did. Ah, he, he was killed by the uh, the murder that uh, Fane and Leo were telling me about then. Oh yes, <laughs> oh yes, nefarious little booger. <laughs> Nobody knows who he is just yet, but I have a feeling we'll catch him soon enough. Yeah, excellent. Um, so yeah, he's all dead and gone now. Very tragic. And he, uh, I actually used his profile in one of my roleplayer beginners guides to show off cool profiles. Oh yeah, I saw that. You 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 sent me a message about that once. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and uh, well, it's making up profiles like that is something I've made a bit of an effort out of. I think that making a cool profile like that, even though it's just flair and and uh, sprinkles, it kind of does help attract some uh, some curiosity to profiles so if you if yeah um it's it's uh, an underrated method adding some flair <laughs> oh absolutely no i totally agree i'm i love a pretty profile <laughs> mm. um so what are you doing now then what character are you playing i'm playing uh, the argonian telogi also known as crow he's um He's uh, this character who is sort of inspired by the L.A. Noir theme. He he wear, wears a fedora. He uh, smokes. Ch uh, he's a chain smoker, and he tells people never to trust the dame. So, uh, <laughs> so <laughs> never he, trust a dame. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so so he's he's uh, he's rather um, rather I wouldn't say crude, but um, but a little uh, sharp mouthed character. From time to time, but but um, he's a lot of fun. Has made a lot of friends. He's an information broker, so he's more than just there. He actually he has a purpose and a use, and he's already doing this, doing part of this murder investigation. Um, 
and that's I I I named him Crow because it's a uh, it's sort of like the crow that always perches and watches things. Though I think that's mostly a raven. Anyway, it's it's it fits the character for more than more than a few reasons. Very cool. I, th- I actually I think I saw his uh, character art done by Sings and Shade. Ah uh, yes, he does. Oh, Sings and Shade, I can recommend it. Perfect guy. Oh yeah, he does great work. <laughs> and uh, I'm expecting that. My previous character, Jurema, he'll have his funeral soon enough. Um, though that will probably be after this murder plotline going about. It, it, oh, it really has, really has sent the entire Daggerfall community into chaos. I mean, really, it has, it has sown havoc everywhere. Everyone's talking about it. Uh, people are falling dead on the streets, not just NPCs. I mean, real characters too. We had, we had a little girl die. We had, uh, a, a woman died. We had two uh, grown-up, uh, strong, powerful men, one of them my character. And, of course, nobody had thought that Durima would get killed because he was actually a suspect. He was sitting in a cell, and people were thinking, Ha! We've got him. This is the guy. This is the one who did it all. And then he dies. Oh. And then, what happens? I mean, what, what, what are people to think? So, he got killed by a bigger fish because he... Um, it, it it has been it has been uh, acknowledged that Jurima was the one was the guy who killed the first three, and then someone else, well, I don't know, wanted the glory, felt threatened, wanted the attention. We don't really know, or the public don't doesn't really know. I know um, <laughs> um, why Jurima was killed. So a lot of people are going about trying to figure out just what the hell is going on here, but they're getting close. I mean, I can already smell it. They oh, they're getting cool. they're really good. So, uh, is Crow? Uh, you said he's been a little bit involved in that. Has he been doing some some digging and investigating himself? Oh yes, he's he's a really he's a really nefarious uh, um, information bro- or, well information broker because he um, normally you'd expect an sort of a a, a information broker like him just going about f- uh, trying to hear all the rumors, asking about, but. Crow has, um, for reasons people can figure out in character, he has the uh, he has some conjuring skills. So he he uh, he employs the the ears and eyes of banekins and scamps to infiltrate the houses and sneak around and hear things. So he literally has eyes and ears everywhere through these little banekins that he uh, really treats like slaves. At some point, he summons up a banekin and throws it up on roofs and stuff so that they can <laughs> slip into houses and hear all the nasty secrets that people know I have. That's awesome. That's his trade, after all. He needs to know everything. And with a little time and and uh, uh, Binkins, <laughs> he'll get there, I'm sure. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show, Crow. You're welcome. Um, I'm glad to, glad to be here. Um, I'm looking forward to how this ends up. Thank you very much. Absolutely. And uh, we'll see you around. Mm-hmm. All right. Welcome to the show, Moriel. Hi. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So I am very excited to hear uh, what you've been up to lately. I know you have uh, two characters that you role play mostly. Uh, do you yeah. want to tell me a little bit about them? Uh, we'll have Moriel and uh, Malador. I know. Two, two <laughs> in names. I'm very creative. Um <laughs> Uh, Moriel is my main on uh, Old Mary Dominion, and she is one of the leaders of the Kin of the Shadow Phoenix, who are over in uh, Reaper's March. And um, right now, she is dealing with some storyline stuff where she is exploring a um, bunch of alien ruins for some answers to the past of, uh, you know, part of her family. Um, and other than that. Uh, it's a little bit of a new thing that we're working on, but our guild is hopefully doing a, a traveling market day uh, for Ooh. the rest of AD. That's uh, where, cool. Yeah, where we will pick a couple different towns, and uh, once a week we'll have an open market day for everyone in Dominion to show up to, have uh, stuff for people doing merchant trade, maybe some games and stuff going on. We're sort of hammering out what it's actually going to be. Nice. That sounds cool. Um, 
Yeah, it, it should be very cool. And maybe some caravan RP. I don't know if people uh, are interested in that. I'm so interested in that. I always want a, an MMO that lets you have wagons. Like, <laughs> I want wagons so bad. <laughs> well, I, well, I basically, like, been looking through the maps. And we're starting at the Thysdrini Arena where, we, um, where we're where hosted at. Because it's, it's got a bunch of, like, stalls and stuff around it. Totally. And then we may move either down, like, down into Grotwood by a land route or over to... Uh, Bandari Trading Post in um, Malabaltor and like go in a circle or something. Oh, okay. Um, other than that, I have uh, Malador, who is a uh, Malmer pirate. Uh, he is the pirate captain of the Redwater Buccaneers, as which you're a member of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not that I've role played with the, you guys yet, but. <laughs> well. We are in Glenumbra now. We have um, we've recently pulled off a gigantic heist uh, where we um, you may have seen in the rumors that there were some dignitaries that were brought over to Stros Mackay by King Vaharajad to sort of take care of the lawlessness that caught, propped up when uh, Bosek got taken care of. Um, but they're all mostly dead now. <laughs> <laughs> I did see that. <laughs> we um, we poisoned their party, pinned it on one of the other dignitaries, um, while simultaneously killing about two different guard outposts and smashing the lighthouse, and then oh. uh, rushed the boat and killed everyone on inside and sailed <laughs> off. <laughs> That's awesome. With all of their with all of their uh, their booty. <laughs> Yar. <laughs> so so cool. now we are in Glenumber in Daggerfall, um, setting up a bunch of different things like a smuggling operation and uh, various things like, you know, protection rackets, mugging people, uh, piracy. Nice. All kinds of cool things. That's cool. Um, what can you tell me about your Malmer? How did he uh, get in, like, our Malmer usually stick together and do their own thing. How did he get involved with all these other races? <laughs> <laughs> um, he may be, and by may, I mean he is wanted by the Malmer for killing a whole lot of people. Um, <laughs> wow, you've got to be pretty bad if you're wanted by the Malmer. <laughs> he, um... Yeah, as as I sort of des- have described uh, the pirates before in uh, our recruitment thread and on my podcast, um, they're cursed pirates uh, because he made a deal with the, with Boethia to help give him essentially eternal life. Oh. Uh, so he's got this box that if he sacrifices people for it and he kills them, uh, it drains all their life force and uh, into the box, which gives him more life force and oh, his followers. I see. That's pretty cool. So to kickstart that item, he sacrificed his entire crew <laughs> and, like, three other crews in a night. <laughs> and so they were not happy about that. I can imagine. <laughs> which is why he's in Daggerfall, because the Malmore don't dare go into Redguard waters. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's... Uh... That's probably one naval force they can't contend with, huh? Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting because in one of the interviews, they basically said that, yeah, the Malmer don't come up here because they got killed by all the Red Guards every time they did. <laughs> nice, that's pretty cool. Yeah, the Red Guards are badass. <laughs> they, they, the Altmer and the Malmer, are like the three big Navy, like primarily Navy kind of piratey guys. Oh, nice. nice. Which is interesting. I did not know that about the Altmer, actually. That's cool. Yeah, apparently because they, I was talking to Mycroft on it, and uh, since they're a mostly island-based um, civilization, their entire army is mostly Navy and Marines. It's why their army is called the Marines, Oh yeah, yeah because they're coming sense. off the ships. Well, we burned at least one of those ships back in Canarthi's Roost. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I think there's a reckoning coming for that. So. <laughs> um, I heard that you were in charge of that now. Uh, um, that's news to me. <laughs> oh. oh, oh. <laughs> I may talk to you later about that because I'll have to tell you. Um, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> I get put in charge of things a lot where <laughs> without me knowing. <laughs> Yeah. Well, uh, I'll tell you about that later. (laughs) But Um, that's kind of what they're doing. So we have, um, by the time this episode comes out, it'll already have happened. But um, we have uh, the Extra Life event coming up. I was Mm -hmm. thinking that might be a good opportunity for us to do a little bit of role play with uh, my 
uh, DC character and you guys. I was thinking that too. Nice. I'm free pretty much all Saturday, so we'll be we'll be running a couple things. Yeah. Uh, we're basically at the stage where we're establishing ourselves as a criminal syndicate. Nice. So we need to get that smuggling operation in Oldcroft going, and so I'll be able to show Wades and Clouds what his new office is. <laughs> yes, I'm so excited about his office. <laughs> it's actually really cool. You go into like the main dock building in Oldcroft, and there's like this this storage room with like this chairs and table and a map and stuff. Ah, oh, that's so cool. I'm so it's, pumped for that. It's cool. I'm I'm really excited about it. I've just been so busy with Bane scale stuff that I haven't yeah. really had time, but we're both busy people. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, cool. Well, it sounds like there's a lot of really cool stuff going on with uh, Redwater Buccaneers and Kin of the Shadow Phoenix. Um, yeah. So Kin is like a slightly shady organization as well, aren't they? So... So like I said, they're based in the Thysrini Arena, which, if you run through the uh, Reaper's March quest, is a place where they're doing blood sports. And we managed to figure out how to get into one of the arenas after it's closed off when you complete the quest. Right. So we have, like, fights there. We have arena fights. We have merchants. And we have what we call dark merchants that's essentially kind of a Thieves Guild assassins uh, guys. That's cool. So we have, like, the front... We actually have a mafia. Oh, uh, nice. We have, like, the front of the fights and the merchants, and we do a bunch of stuff kind of off on the side um, that's all really hush-hush. Nice. That's very cool. Well, you certainly like your uh, criminal roleplay, don't you? <laughs> well, the, it's funny because the criminal part of the... Can, my character is not at all involved in that. Oh, really? Oh. She's involved in the... Um, non-criminal aspects oh, gotcha. so she never touches the criminal part and she's probably pretty busy with her alien research because she's like obsessed with that isn't she yeah she really is <laughs> uh, thankfully they've managed to fix one of the problems of it where um sort of the alien magic almost drew someone insane but we managed to make it so that will never happen again Oh, well, that's good. Which is nice. <laughs> yeah. As long as no more vampires feed on my character. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> They're everywhere. Well, it's funny because there's a lot of vampires in this guild. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I will let you go, but uh, thank you so much for coming on Scrollplay. No problem. And I'll definitely have you and Knight around again for like a full episode for you guys at some point in the future. All right, that sounds great. Awesome. All right, thank you very much. Welcome to the show, Varlin. Thank you. I'm super excited to have you and your silky smooth voice. Oh, wow. <laughs> we are excited to be here. <laughs> we. <laughs> <laughs> My voice and I. Oh, I see. <laughs> um, so you play AD's only Breton. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, can you tell me a little bit about Varland and maybe why he's hanging out over there? Oh, uh, well, every time I call him that, I get in trouble because there are a few other Bretons out there. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> they just don't RP with me for some reason. Oh, huh. You'd um, think the Bretons would want to stick together. I know, I know. I got, we've got to work on that, you guys. <laughs> um, so, uh... Basically, Varland set out for the Dominion because he got kind of divine guidance from Magnus. He felt that the future emperor would be found in the Dominion, and he set out to find that person and help them on their path. Um, it wasn't like a, like a voice from the sky or something like that. It was just sort of like a feeling that came over him over, a, over the course of time. Hmm. So he thinks that... Uh, it's somebody living in Dominion lands, or it's maybe somebody, like, working for the Aldemary Dominion? Does he have any idea? Um, you know, there really has not been a lot of evolution on that level. Um, partially because it's a tricky thing to bring into RP, like, the future Emperor, and so forth. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it might be Iran, might not. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> Um, has he had any interaction with Irene himself? Um, he's presented himself to her, but other than that, he, you know, like, in court, coming up, bowing, the whole thing. But 
Other than that, he hasn't really interacted with her. That's another tricky thing to do in roleplay, though. <laughs> so. Yeah, I mean, it's just more of kind of a background thing that has happened. Gotcha. But um, you do hang out in Daggerfall Covenant sometimes, too, right? Recently, uh, Varland has taken a trip up that way in order to investigate a lead on his missing sister. Oh, uh, how did his sister go missing? Um, well, actually, his family, um, he disappeared into Evergloam when he was 12. Ooh. Yeah, and he ended up having to sort of survive there, um, you know, almost kind of like a Lord of the Flies situation. <laughs> <laughs> His child is suddenly out in this crazy, dangerous wilderness and having to learn the ropes. Um, and that's sort of how I RP and how I've written in his dark magic abilities is his time in oblivion learning the Daedric magic. Oh. Um, so while he was there, his family um, was basically captured by a necromancer who I have not named, but may or may not be related to the worm cult. And uh, his sister disappeared at that time, so he received uh, word from a friend that she'd been seen somewhere in the Rivenspire area, so he set out to investigate that. And also, he's a necromancer hunter, so there are plenty of necromancers in D.C. to hunt. Yes, I, uh, I can imagine. And uh, I've seen him firsthand uh, working alongside the prelude to that very end. Yes, yes. I'm so glad I didn't screw that up because that was my very first time with the DM system. <laughs> uh, yeah, you you seemed to uh, know what you were doing. You could have surprised uh, me. So <laughs> I'm glad you weren't looking too close at the spreadsheet for when I was like accidentally entering my dialogue into the field. <laughs> That's, I've I've actually like uh, like deleted the title and stuff by accident by holding down <laughs> my push to talk button. I'm like, oops. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's tricky. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that spreadsheet is a blast. I've been having a lot of fun with it. Yeah, it's a great system. Um, so what's Varland up to nowadays then? So um, Varland is up to, he has a shop beneath the, Cur the Curanasium in Weyrest, and uh, he sells quote-unquote summoning supplies, um, which is sort of a way for him to lure necromancers um, by selling you know, unsavory items, possibly black soul gems. <laughs> <laughs> um, so he has this shop, and he's basically trying to get a bead on necromantic activity, worm cult activity in Wayrest and in the Covenant in general um, by seeing who comes through his shop and, and pretending to be interested in necromancy and pretending to be open-minded about it. Um, while secretly being out to kill every necromancer alive. <laughs> He's an anglerfish. Yes, exactly. <laughs> That's very cool. I really like that. Um, <laughs> have you actually gotten to like roleplay that out a little bit? I have, yeah. Um, I've, the best part is there aren't a lot of people who are playing worm cultists. Um, I think there's actually a guild for it on the European server. Um, but the cool thing is Varlin's whole scheme, the way he's sort of set up in this non-straightforward way, he's deceptive, he's pretending to be open-minded about necromancy, and sometimes he kind of cons people into buying black soul gems, and then he gets to track them. <laughs> so it becomes this whole kind of like paranoid, self-fulfilling prophecy kind of situation where, you know, he's he's decided somebody's a necromancer because they have the aptitude and are basically he talked them in, Oh, black soul gems, you know, unlimited power. <laughs> Somebody's like, well, okay, I, I guess I'll buy one. You're a necromancer. <laughs> <laughs> that must be a worm cult joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That, that, uh, that moment really encapsulates his personality because once, once necromancy comes into the equation, he, he's a very loose cannon. He's just very like, over the top, and he just goes ape shit. <laughs> and yet, he uses dark magic. Yes. Yeah, that's an interesting thing, is because um, his opinion of Daedric magic and of Daedra in general is 
more open-minded than most people of Tamriel um, because of the time he spent in Oblivion. Um, necromancy he has a problem with because of the corruption of souls that happens in necromancy. Um, he's, a, he's a devout follower of Magnus, and he feels that uh, mortal souls are our greatest gift um, from the Adada. Um, so to corrupt that is just like the greatest crime. So he's always working on ways to keep that from happening and to uh, protect mortal souls. Oh, interesting. So the Daedric magic is sort of a means to an end. Yeah, I mean, some people feel dark magic has not been specifically defined on what is happening with the, these crystalline formations that occur. So um, I kind of see it as I have a whole head cannony thing that I see it as. Cool, yeah. But I, um, yeah, I, I don't see it as being directly related to necromancy. Uh, what is your head cannony thing? I'm curious. Uh, well, I kind of took some inspiration from Lovecraft, and um, you know, some people say, well, you know, the eight divines are the only gods that have ever existed, but you also have interesting entities like the Magna Gay and all kinds of other f entities out there in the lore. So I was thinking, star gods are like stars. Gods are represented by celestial bodies. What happens when star death occurs? You know, what happens when a black hole occurs? Is that a, is that a dead god floating out there? So I, I decided that the shards are like pieces of these dead gods that you're summoning that sort of contain this void magic. Oh, that's cool. To kind of <laughs> relate it to astronomy and, and the evolution of a star relating to the evolution of a uh, divine being. Nice. That's cool. I like that, especially since uh, a lot of the stars actually are, like you said, they're, uh, the Magna Gay are out there. That's actually what some of the stars are. So... I'm sure some of them have died at some point. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if, it, if in fact, I mean, generally the stars are thought of in um, TES lore as being these doors torn to Aetherius. So, you know, it, it doesn't quite match up. But if there truly is similarity between our celestial bodies in the real world and those in Nern and in Mundus, then... You know, maybe it could work. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, that's the thing about headcanon is it's it's your it's your thing. So if it works for you, then it works. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It works. <laughs> Excellent. Cool. Well, um, thanks for coming on the show. Uh, it was great to finally get to interview you. Well, thank you. I love watching scroll play, and thank you for all the positive energy you put out there in the community. Awesome. Sweet. I'm so glad you like it. Thank you. Yeah, very much. <laughs> for sure. Awesome, I've been sitting on those interviews for a while and I've been eager to get them out. But for this episode, we still have the character feature and exercise. Let's start with our character who comes from the Evanhart Pact this time. A quiet, determined Ashlander, Hanlu Mesa is insatiably curious. He listens more than speaks and is open-minded. Perhaps this is because he has the heart of a healer. At a young age, his clanmates began to notice that he never grew ill, seeming to be immune to sickness. Due to this, he was trained by the wise woman, Sheltala. She became a mother to him. But one day, when he returned from picking ingredients, Han Lu discovered his clan, all dead. He has been led to believe that it had something to do with House Indira. Han Lu has strangely prophetic dreams, seeming to give him hints at situations yet to come, though they are vague. What could these dreams mean for him? Perhaps we will all find out soon enough. Time for the character exercise. Okay, so we have our answers from... First we have Igmund, who replies, 
The red-headed myrrh, who can completely empathize with a person, and who does not know what a Mayroon Dagon is, would begin to immediately render aid. He would first remove his own hooded cloak and place it over the person, concealing him, probably in case they're being watched. He would first remove his own hooded cloak and place it over the person, concealing him. While doing that, he would also be assessing the surroundings to see if there were any obvious signs of pursuers. If this occurs in the day, which we'll say it does, he would then stroll with the person through the nearest marketplace. There he would handily acquire some additional attire and nourishment for his charge. The red-headed myrrh would then spend time comforting and listening to the individual's plight. After all is said and done, the red-headed myrrh would research and investigate the cult to see if there are any potential threats to Valenwood. The red-headed Bosmer would see no signs of pursuers, and he would also be filled in on how this person has no memory of their life before being abducted by the cult. The stammering victim would be in a hurry, though, warning that there was a ritual underway which could destroy the entire city. He would try to get the red-headed Bosmer to follow him, believing he is the only one who can stop this ritual. Igmund. The ragged person takes you to a well-hidden hole at the base of one of the city's massive trees. Do you follow? What supplies do you bring? And now we have a response from Roshana, who says her character would merely raise a brow at the man, ears twitching apprehensively. After a moment, she would calmly and kindly direct him to the nearest city guard or watchman. The person becomes frantic, telling you that he saw your face in a vision. After quickly filling you in on the plot to destroy the city, he urges you to come with him. Do you go? If so, what supplies do you bring? And Duchy, being a Daedra worshipping scum, wrote, First off, I'd like to argue that the term cultist is often disparaging towards legitimate Daedra worshippers. We prefer the term zealot when dealing with the more hardline and extremist groups. She then goes on to offer her theories as to what may be going on here. You can read them yourself and post your own on the Tesso RP thread for scrollplay. It's under the Art and Media forum. Igmund and Roshana, please post your responses, and they will be read off in the next episode and replied to. I'm thinking this will take at least two more episodes to finish up. Um, right now your stories are pretty much the same, but I have no doubt that they will split off at some point, and it'll be interesting to see. Thank you for replying, and remember, the viewers are counting on you to solve this mystery. That's it for this episode, guys. Thanks for watching. Peace. Well, isn't that because you actually have been kicked in the nuts? Yes, I did get kicked in the bollocks and still yeah. take out boots. <laughs> One of my defining moments. <laughs>